All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about why mastering is so hard. Why is mastering a specific skill? Why are there specialists that are mastering only? And what really about this whole process is so difficult? Hi, my name is Tyson. I'm a mastering engineer here at Dinosaur Dog Mastering. And today we're gonna to be diving into why mastering actually is difficult. Also, I'm gonna give you some helpful tips on exactly how to do it better and how to get around the most common roadblocks with mastering in order to make it less hard. <laughs> with that in mind, I also want to get, just give you something right off the bat, and that is my Mastering for Self-Producers checklist. It is in the first link of the description, so you can just click on that link in a new tab, watch this training, and then actually go put this into practice of mastering your own songs with the Mastering for Self-Producers checklist. It's all the goods that I can give you in a PDF document for how to master your songs. So make sure you're getting that and let's continue on on the discussion of why mastering is so hard. The root of why mastering is so difficult is because mastering needs to be objective. Our whole goal with mastering is to make this perfectly sonically balanced but loud song to be able to be consumed in all of the various ways that it will be consumed and have it sound the best possible in all of those environments. So it is actually a very objective process and that is the core difficulty of mastering well is that nobody is truly objective. If you want to get really into the science of it, there is some very extreme differences from room to room to whether you have treatment in the right places, whether you've covered your first reflections, whether you have diffusion, how isolated is it from the outside world, all of this stuff. At the end of the day, that is all in a service to getting a more objective view of your songs. But let's just assume you have the perfectly treated room, the perfect monitoring system and you're listening to your song, that's still not going to help you. If you haven't been mastering for a very long time, that is not going to help you because you're going to be confused. You're, you don't know what an actually sonic balance sound sounds like in order to master your song well. Beyond not having the right skills, not having the right room, you are not objective with your own songs. If I'm mastering my own song, I have a ton of insecurities about my own song, and so I'm probably going to make really dumb decisions in the mastering process to try to compensate for the fact that I don't feel confident confident with the music that I've been putting out there. And regardless of how professional you are and how really proud of your song you are, you're still going to have these insecurities deep inside that are going to come out right at the mastering process and just self-sabotage your project. What are the solutions? The first solution that you could potentially look at is hire a professional to master your track. I'm a professional mastering engineer, so I'm more than happy to master your tracks. Just go to dinosaurdogmastering.com, leave me a message, and we can get a project rolling for you to master your tracks. But obviously, this costs money. And so if you don't have money and you don't want to spend money on your music, then this route, although probably the best, is not necessarily always ideal. The second option is you can spend thousands of dollars in upgrading your studio, getting it to be the most objective environment possible. But the issues with this is that one, it costs even more money than just hiring a professional. The second issue is even if you have the objective room, you don't know what a sonically balanced sound sounds like. So how are you gonna know where to boost and where to cut inside of your song if you don't have an objective room, but if you have and actually train your ears on what an objective master should sound like. And so with those two issues combined, I don't really recommend this. Third solution is download my guide and it will teach you how to master your song more objectively without upgrading your studio and without upgrading your monitoring situation. You can use any pair of headphones and master your song like a pro. And if that sounds just way too good to be true, then just hang in there and download the guide. You're also gonna have access to a training where you can watch me master songs with no monitoring at all. It is 100% possible, and if you're curious at all about that, make sure you're downloading the, downloading the guide in the first link of the description and checking out the guide and then also the video training associated with it because I prove to you that it is possible to master your songs like a professional without any premium plugins, and regardless of your room or monitoring situation, it is 100% 
possible. So make sure you download the guide, watch the training, and then you're going to be well on your way in mastering your, your songs like a professional without upgrading your studio and without hiring me. All of that stuff is for free. Just to give you a little bit of an inside scoop, the real way to be objective with your music is using frequency analyzers. They work so well in maintaining your objectivity around your song so you can master your song like a professional, remain objective so you're not using this ridiculous insecurity in making up for the fact that you aren't truly confident with the song that you're putting out there. If you're curious how that all works, download the guide, watch the training, and figure out exactly how to do that. I hope this is a little bit enlightening on why mastering is hard, but also some potential solutions on getting around why mastering is so hard and learning just the basic skills that you need in order to master your songs and actually have confidence when you sit down to master your songs. Okay, with all of that said, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.